If you're thinking of traveling to Florida, you have a choice to make. Should I fly or drive? We have usually flown, but since COVID, a lot of things have changed, especially if you are Canadian. This time we thought we would drive and we thought we would share what it was like with the traffic, our experience, costs, and anything that improved the experience. When we decided to drive, we looked at the time and realized it would be over 20 hours of driving. We didn't know how long the border time would be with traffic and stops for lunch, etc. as well. We didn't want to drive straight through as we wanted this to be partially a road trip and to see the area and we wanted to feel rested when we arrived. Since we didn't really know where to start, we looked to some Facebook groups for advice. Many suggested traveling the I-75 because of the weather at that time of the year and suggested getting the book Along Interstate 75 by Dave Hunter. So we got the book, but last minute. We thought we would leave Friday night after work and go until we were tired. Our thought was this would give us more time on arrival day to do things. Well, Friday after work, we realized that neither one of us felt like we could drive a lot that night as we were both up early, so we figured we wouldn't be able to go past midnight. We looked at the book and used the guide and picked Finley, Ohio. We looked at reviews for hotels and reserved online while driving, and so we checked into the Baymont in Finley, Ohio around midnight. Unfortunately, we didn't count on surprises and thought we would have had a restful night. We learned that even the best plans can fall through when at 4 a.m. the fire alarm went off, then again at 4.30, then randomly every 15 minutes to every half hour until 6.30 a.m. when we checked out. We won't include this cost as we were compensated a few days later. One tip to learn is not to accept the first offer of 15% off from the front desk. In hindsight, we realized that leaving Friday night was not beneficial and we should have just chosen to leave first thing Saturday morning and had two longer days of driving instead. So back on the road early the next morning, we found a Tim Hortons very near the hotel and went back on the I-75. Traffic was not bad and some snow started for a short period of time and ended. We went in mid-March, so we didn't really expect snowstorms, but that's not something you can plan for. We later then pulled out the book to see what it was all about. And we found the I-75 book to have so much interesting information that I read it out loud and the time went very quickly. There's the St. Bernard Soap Factory, which was famous back in the 1900s. Cincinnati subway system. Ask most Cincinnati folk where you can find the closest subway station and they will probably look at you as if you are crazy. Cincinnati doesn't have a subway or does it? Although we didn't go off the I-75 to make any stops, there was plenty of options to do so. Along with the maps, this book has detailed information on many stop-worthy restaurants, shops, and history of the areas that you're passing. If you're interested, we'll put a link below. So traffic was pretty good and we watched for signs passing from Ohio to Kentucky. We're in Kentucky. We're in Kentucky. That was it? That's it. We're in Kentucky. We're in Kentucky. We stopped for gas and a bite to go in Kentucky and then we kept driving. We did use Google Maps as well as we were notified of traffic delays and the first time we were rerouted was when we were getting close to the Jellicoe Mountains near the Kentucky-Tennessee border. An accident had occurred that would have delayed us 45 minutes, so we chose the alternate route. This route we found was quite pretty and gave us a nice indication of what the communities looked like in the area. Since we didn't sleep much that night, we took turns driving so we could have a quick nap and we missed filming the Tennessee-Georgia border. We made another pit stop to stretch our legs at a rest area where we noticed the snow was mostly gone by this point. Another concern we had prior to traveling was the Atlanta-Georgia traffic. Every, everywhere we read, people said how bad it was. So we'll show you what it was like on a Saturday driving through and again on our return trip back on a Friday rush hour. not take the HLV lanes, which may have been a mistake. The I-75 book suggested Continue it. Continue on I-75 south for seven miles. But unfortunately, I wasn't reading it at the time, so you may always want to keep a step ahead of the book for recommendations. Getting close to the airport. Seems to be bottlenecked again where people 
I think are trying to get off at this exit. Slows down a bit and um, oh, there might be an accident up here. Due to the lack of sleep, we decided and booked to stay on the other side of Atlanta in Macon, Georgia. We used the book to avoid going through the town and took a bypass and stayed at the Best Western Macon for the night and grabbed a bite to eat in the room. The next morning, we got breakfast and a bite to go and headed back on the road. And gas today, Andrew, what was the price? Four twenty-nine a gallon. Okay, so that's the most expensive we've had so far. There's the Florida sign. We are It wasn't long before we reached the Georgia-Florida border and had to stop at the Florida Welcome Center. At the Welcome Center, you will find that outside they have picnic benches and a good spot to stretch your legs and also a Florida sign for a great photo spot. Inside they offered free samples of orange and grapefruit juice and plenty of brochures for everything you want to do in Florida. They have broken up the brochures in sections based on the area of Florida you will be visiting. These had motels, attractions, and some coupon books. We got some juice and gathered some brochures and hit the road. The rest of our trip was in various locations in Florida and we'll be showing some of these excursions in future vlogs, but we'll show in the video the few stops we made on the return trip with our total costs. First we'll get into the pros and cons of driving versus flying. Pros. 1. You are on your own schedule so you won't need to worry about flight delays or reschedules from airlines. 2. You don't have to rent a car in Florida. Currently, this can save a lot of money as rentals are very high right now. 3. You can pack more or bring more items home. 4. You can have your privacy while traveling. 5. You can see the sights on the drive and turn it into a fun road trip. When I was little, we would see some of the sights in some of the states, which brings us to number 6. 6. It can be educational. 7. It's easy to take your pets. Cons of driving. 1. It takes longer. This can be a big one if you only have a short time on your trip. 2. The possibility of car accidents or traffic delays. 3. Your car can break down, which we did experience when we were in Florida, but we'll save that for another video. If anyone has any of their pros or cons, please leave us a comment. Speaking of car accidents, on the way home we did have a few crazy driver moments that were a little tense, but luckily no accident. Getting closer to the Florida border. Just noticed something here at this gas station. They have this little Shaw Paw Park where you can take your dog for, it's like a little fenced in area for a little run and uh, for them to do their business over there. So we decided to stop at the Magnolia Plantation. Um, it's in the I-75 book here. Anyways, it sounds interesting. It's, it's about that time we need to make a quick bathroom break. Um, so, we'll just show you around in here. They apparently have, not that we're really wanting to shop, but we're going to take a look. They apparently have a lot of uh, jams and jellies and clean bathrooms and pecans. non-stop speed traps along this area here and we did read that in the book as well um, what it has come in handy just knowing the areas as well as the um, Google Maps exit 69 so Chula see. yeah Chula Georgia Chula Georgia after our Magnolia stop we kept on driving and we started to approach Atlanta when we arrived, it couldn't have been the worst time, and we'll show you what the traffic was like. This time we took the HOV lanes and used the toll roads that were open. So we're just getting closer to getting on the I-75, 
and we're taking the Peach Pass Express Lanes. We had purchased a Unipass before we left Canada and this came in handy as it is good at all these different locations for, for passes and so we didn't have to worry about using any of these roads. You can see we avoided a lot of traffic on the I-75 while traveling through Atlanta. If you are interested, you can purchase the Unipass directly from them or through Amazon. They were sold out and we didn't have time to wait, so we ordered ours from Amazon for $46.33 Canadian, including tax. The listed price is US dollar direct. We did have to prepay and we put $30 onto the pass and you will see we only ended up spending roughly $15 on our entire trip. So we still have more for our next, next trip that we go on. This cat pass can be used over and over and this does come in handy on the Florida toll roads as well. We'll put a link to this below as well if you're interested. The rest of the trip was mostly uneventful and we stopped for gas and a bite to eat. We've just passed Knoxville, Tennessee. It's now 9.20 basically at night. Um, it's dark. I'm starting to get tired just because it's starting to get really boring. I can't see anything. Um, I'm just the passenger so it's more boring for me. I'm not boring. <laughs> He's not talking much. Oh, I am too. We're not talking much. I'm on my phone and I'm bored of that now because I don't want to use all my data. Traffic is very light. Then stopped at Corbin, Kentucky at the Baymont Corbin, Kentucky for the night. The next morning was back on the road. See all those little divots in the middle of the road? Right by the lines? Those were the things you were hitting last night. Yes, I watched you. Seriously, it wasn't. It was. I'm serious, it wasn't. Okay, multiple times, there wasn't holes in the road all the time. Yeah, there was. You were hitting the middle of the road. Like you were hitting the lines. And a half. There was just rocky roads. See, when I hit them, it's a different feel. It feels the same to me. So here are our total costs, but note that all our gas while driving around in Florida is included in here as well. So we fueled up at all these locations um, and we ended up spending $449.22 Canadian, which was $345.86 US. The hotel in Macon was $138.91 Canadian and $105.91 US. On the return trip, the hotel in Corbin, Kentucky, Canadian was 106.35 and 82.63. The tolls were $15.04 US, which was roughly 19.32 Canadian. The Unipass to buy it, um, which you can use multiple times, was 46.33 Canadian, um, includes tax, and you can buy it from Unipass directly for US dollars of 14.95. So the total cost for traveling, which also includes driving within Florida, was $760.13 Canadian or $564.39 US. That was roughly two days of traveling. The I-75 book we didn't include because that's optional, um, but you can use that in the future as well. And they do give you a web link for updates. That we paid $36.86 Canadian, including tax, um, and it isn't included in the cost. So the flying costs that we would have spent ranged from $400 to $600 plus car park, which would be roughly $200 for two weeks. Then the car rental in Florida of like $600 minimum. And then you add the travel time. So for us, it would be about nine hours of traveling each day. So in conclusion, we decided for us, it proved to be cost effective to drive. We did have two weeks, so it was plenty of time for us. We enjoyed seeing the sights as we drove and I found the book entertained me as I was the passenger most of the time. There were places I would be interested in stopping and seeing on future trips, but it all depends if the destination is your focus or the road trip or a little both. We both agreed that for a one week holiday we wouldn't drive as neither of us would like to drive straight through, but any trip from 10 days plus we would drive again. So thank you for watching and if you have any comments that you could help um, update other people or even ourselves, we would love to hear them um, for future trips. It would be very beneficial. 
Also, if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, please like and subscribe.